Chapter 3.3 Life's War Against Entropy Thought itself is a limited lifetime phenomenon in the cosmos. The relentless rise in entropy ensures that any cogitating being that happens to still be able to persist in this unusual realm of particles will ultimately burn up in the entropic waste generated by its own process of thinking. So the process of thought itself in the far future will generate too much heat for that being to be able to release that heat to the environment and to avoid burning up in its own waste. Brian Greene, Reference 46, Chapter 3.3.1. To live is to project power. Big things have small begin beginnings. David 8, comma, the android, reference 47. A key observation from nature is that resource ownership for all living organisms seems to be fundamentally linked to physical power projection. The proof of work protocol is primordial. It has existed since a biogenesis, the dawn of life, a biogenesis. It is half a million times older than sapiens and their belief systems about resource ownership and property rights. Proof of power exists in every corner of life, at every scale. Everywhere you look, you can see that resources are owned insofar as organisms have the capacity and inclination to project physical power to gain and maintain access to those resources. This begs a question. How did the proof of power property ownership protocol begin? And how does it work? Among the first resources that would likely qualify as being owned by life were mineral rich deposits of nutrients captured from deep sea hydrothermal vents short of, shortly after the formation of oceans around 4 billion years ago. Life's first major power projection technology wasn't sharp teeth like what we saw with the example of the wolf in the previous section. Instead, it was a pressurized membrane, little more than a bubble. A pressurized membrane is a wall of thin mass stretched across a volume that exerts force to displace surrounding mass, as illustrated in Figure 9. When external forces from the environment contact the membrane, the membrane exploits Newton's third law to passively project opposing forces back at the environment to displace the mass of the surrounding volume. Reference 48, life's early power projection tool, low pressure force membrane, high pressure, life's first captured resources, the vent. Figure nine. Using pressurized membranes to capture resources and survive in the wild would probably qualify as life's earliest and most successful power projection tactic, technique, and technology to date. Pressurized membranes enable life to exert physical power to capture nutrient-rich volume from their surrounding environment. The spike consisted of nothing more than thin films stretched across microscopic gaps in rocks. These early life forms were nevertheless global superpowers. They stood as iron citadels capable of projecting infinitely more power than the lifeless void which existed before them. Reference 48. The tiny fraction of watts exerted by these microscopic bubbles were anything but insignificant. They were monuments of defiance against what could be described as life's mortal enemy, the cold and unsympathetic entropy of the universe. If we ignore the technicality that these microorganic structures emerged billions of years before the evolution of sight, then we could describe the emergence of pressurized membranes as life's first vini, vidi, vici moment. At this early stage, membranes only were only capable of passively exerting equal and opposite forces upon the surrounding environment. But this passive power projection strategy didn't make membranes a defense-only power projection tactic. 
the nutrient-rich incumbentory volume occupied by these pressurized membranes was captured the same way Caesar captured Rome by force. Reference 48. Didn't make membranes a defense-only power projection tactic. As discussed in the previous section, physical power is how all living organisms achieve consensus on the legitimate state of ownership and chain of custody of resources. Legitimate is put in quotes to serve as a reminder that legitimate resource ownership is an abstract construct invented by sapiens to assist with the peaceful adjudication of intraspecies property disputes. In other words, nature doesn't care about what sapiens think legitimate resource ownership means. In fact, nature does not appear to care about any abstract sapien construct. Nature could care less about people's property rights or rules encoded into property law. Nature only appears to recognize proof of power. Nature only appears to recognize proof of power. The first living organisms didn't have the capacity to think, much less believe that the nutrient-rich volume they captured was legitimately theirs or not. They simply took it by force the same way all animals, including and especially sapiens, as much as they hate to admit it, gain and maintain access to their precious resources. Early life forms owned deep sea hydrothermal nutrients for the same reason a wolf owns meat, because they had the capacity and inclination to project physical power to successfully capture and secure their access to it. Since these first little organisms emerged, life's pressurized membrane power projection tactic has evolved and taken many different complex forms over the past 4 billion years, but the function has not changed. From microscopic bubbles to armor to castle walls to militarized national borders, all pressurized membranes work the same way. They passively project physical power to gain and maintain access to precious resources. These resources are captured by force, period. A biogenesis reminds us that living is an act of projecting physical power to capture physical resources. Life physically captures the oxygen it breathes by force. Life physically captures the food it eats by force. Life physically captures the volume it occupies by force. What life needs to survive is owned for no other reason than the fact that life has the capacity and inclination to project power to capture it. A quick glance into the night sky reminds us that the universe does not owe us our lives. We have what we have because we take it, using physical power. As discussed in the next chapter, the rest of what we believe about resource ownership is abstract. Chapter 3.3.2 To live is to convert chaos into structure. In any fight, it is the guy who is willing to die who is going to win that inch. Tony D. Amato, Any Given Sunday. <laughs> Reference 49. <laughs> The emergent behavior of life is something remarkable. By projecting lots of physical power to capture and secure access to resources, life is miraculously able to turn the inexorable chaos of the universe into something more structured. It then leverages that structure to exert more physical power to capture more resources and convert those resources into even more structure. Life owes its existence and prosperity to this process. Few things are as aligned with the fundamental nature of all living things than this physical power projection process through which organisms secure access to resources and then use those resources to build additional structures for no other discernible reason than to simply improve its ability to countervail entropy and survive a little longer. Having defined entropy and established its first beachhead of nutrient-rich territory, life's first pressurized membranes were fully equipped for battle. Fighting inch over inch for more nutrient-rich volume 
pressurized membranes expanded its in size and strength until they created enough structure to where they no longer needed the structural support of rocks. Using clever power projection tactics like closed loop pressurized control, life was able to construct fully self-contained membrane bubble fortresses, such as the one shown in figure 10, capable of floating to unexplored nutrient-rich heights. And you see figure 10, early stage global superpower with massive scale internal economy. Force physically captured resources. Under the protection of their pressurized membranes, these new global superpowers were able to form highly complex internal microorganic economies. Subcellular molecules self-assembled into increasingly more specialized workforces, trade in various microorganic goods and services, and become an even more efficient, productive, and resource abundant. Through this special combination of robust membrane power projection and high function and internal economy, life was able to follow a multi-step biochemical path towards ever increasing structure until it managed to build complex, massive scale economies we now call single cell bacteria, reference 48. 